Kent Smith is a wealth of knowledge and 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 is my go-to guy when I want to know some of the top secret stuff because he's he's uh, delved in a lot of different things and he's agreed to talk to us about the Egyptians that are not only here in Utah but elsewhere too possibly so I'll have to see what he talks about anyways but with that said Kent take it away all right to, to start with uh I know there are several people that are interested in Egyptians, uh, any proof of Egyptians in Utah, and I don't really have much on them outside the state of Utah other than in Egypt itself. I have a lot of stuff in my library on, on Egyptian stuff over there, but the interest here is uh, what we have here in Utah that I know about, and, and I've heard about uh, all of these are, are going to be heard about with the exception of one that I've actually seen photos of uh, from someone else. I'm, I'm trying to get my own photos now, but uh, uh, there's, I know people have looked for one uh, down around Lake Powell. I don't know if they've ever found it or not. There's supposed to be a panel writing down there, but uh, start out with um, the, the first one um, that I heard of around here. Um, was told to me by, uh, I'll just use first name, a uh, friend of mine named Scott uh, told me the story. He said that his grandparents uh, lived in Morgan, uh, up in Morgan County, and uh, they were deer hunting. Went up uh, Smith Creek and uh, deer hunting and actually went over the top of the mountain. So they were coming down onto the Davis County side. Um, just barely over the peak, uh, where uh, the peak is where the county line is, just barely into the Davis County side, it'd be Layton, East Layton. Um, they ran into some ruins uh, in the brush, and it's just the rock foundation to a small building. Uh, the building itself uh, had stairs inside it that you could still make out. You could make out the perimeter of the building and rock foundation. And inside the building, there was some type of a rock. Uh, well, it was described to me as looking like uh, a, a gravestone or a grave marker, a large one that was kind of heart-shaped on the top. Um, this uh, large rock in the middle of the building had Egyptian writing on it. Uh, since then, the, the grandparents told all their family, their kids and grandkids, about about the um, this structure they found, and the family has gone up and looked for it quite a few times. So far, they've never found anything. I haven't tried to myself to. I would probably. Uh, try to use some aerial photography but uh, to search in the area but uh, they said it was in low brush and you had to be pretty close to it to see it but that's that's basically that story is uh, so why did they think it might be Egyptian apparently they they came down uh, I don't know they took photos of it but they after they would finished deer hunting they came down after they'd looked at it pretty close and and got into books comparing different languages that they thought it might be and it looked like it matched Egyptian more than anything else on the type of writing that it was so that that's so what I heard some, some writing on that that stone then there that's what that that was it, it was just uh, some writing on the stone and and they uh, looked at it pretty close and came down and just matched it up and said that they thought that it looked like it was Egyptian from what they'd be, been able to see in the books and so forth. So uh, so that that was probably the first first one that I heard in this area, uh, other than uh, I'd heard earlier about one people were looking for down, I guess say down in central Utah, but I don't know if they ever found that one or not. The next one that I heard uh, was uh, uh, another friend of ours uh, by uh, by the name of Jed. Uh, Jed was with a couple of other scout leaders, and they took a group of scouts. They went up uh, North Ogden Divide, uh, up out of North Ogden, up onto the uh, right at the peak where you're getting ready to go down into Huntsville and Liberty Eden area. Uh, there's a parking lot right there, and a lot of people hike. There's trails going uh, both directions along the rim. 
they took their scouts up and and uh, they hiked them until the scouts were kind of getting dehydrated and getting tired and they decided they better let them rest and and uh, have a drink and rehydrate for a minute while it while the scouts were drinking their water and rehydrating um, one of the scout leaders at least was hiking a little bit around the perimeter of where they were at uh, perimeter area and just moving around looking and he come across a large stone box with Egyptian writing on it um, since then he's been he went back up and, and he couldn't find it the second time he went back up and I haven't talked to him since but uh, but I'm not sure if he went north or south from the parking lot um, I've kind of come up with my own plan of how to get pretty close if I can get uh, if I can get Jed to come up with us uh, we'll take him as our guide but if I can I've I've got some pretty good ideas how we can get in generally in the correct area there's a lot of things up along there that I've heard about other things so uh, aside from the stone box there's other things that you might run across up there so uh, again not a long story but uh, just a stone box with some Egyptian writing on it found by some scouters uh, hiking up North Ogden Divide area. Another friend named Vern. Um, Vern, uh, at one of our meetings, brought a, a piece of paper. It was a, a Xerox copy of a photograph, so it wasn't great, but you could see it okay. But uh, uh, he told me that some friends of his that had horses and would go horseback riding uh, took off on a trailhead. Uh, which would be south and uh, east of Hillfield, uh, going east and heading up the mountain. They uh, got up up the side of the mountain a little bit on a, on a horse trail, and um, for whatever reason, I don't know if they were walking their horses or riding or whatever, but uh, there had been a, a, a big ledge and they found a boulder that looked like it broken off the ledge and was the ledge was on one side of the trail and the boulder was on the other side of the trail. Uh, the boulder had Egyptian writing on it. And so uh, they did take some photos. Uh, Vern, Vern had a picture of it. It did look Egyptian to me. Uh, and so uh, I've planned now for a couple of years to hike up. I've got pretty good uh, description of where it's at. So I want to go up and, and uh, take some of my own photos. I'm pretty sure I can find it from the descriptions I've got. If not, uh, I've been told the name of the people with the horses. And i also also still friends with Vern, although he's moved out of the area now. But I can always call him on the phone. He never hiked up to it anyway. But, uh, but if I have any questions on on the people that did find it he can give me all that information and so so uh, I may get up to it this this year I was definitely gonna do it but I've been in a medical boot most of this summer and haven't been able to do any hiking it's just come off recently so we'll see may get up there before the snow flies so uh, and along with that uh, with the medical boot I was going uh, up to a uh, hospital and seeing a wound care specialist. The, do the foot doctor that I was seeing uh, is a master scouter and he does a lot of hiking and uh, I was talking to him a little bit about it, telling him I wanted to get that boot off so I could go do some hiking. He asked me where, where I was going to go hiking or what I was looking for or looking at and so I told him the story about uh, uh, Egyptian writing and about where it was at and he says, oh, I've got some pictures on my phone of that. And so he got his phone out and showed me. What he showed me was not Egyptian writing, although it's not Indian petroglyphs or pictographs. And I didn't recognize as any kind of ancient writing that I've, that I've seen myself, but it's uh, quite well done and pretty deep carved. And, and so, uh, so he uh, told me where that's at and gave me a good description of how to find that. And that is 
probably less than a half a mile away from the Egyptian writing and I have no idea what kind of writing it is. I've got samples of all kinds of ancient writing but it didn't look like anything I've ever seen so that's another one that I'd like to hike up to maybe again this year if the snow will back off for a little bit and if it doesn't get too, too wet up there and greasy because it's kind of a steep mountainside there or you've got to hike up to both of these but they're pretty close together so so those are uh, the three Egyptian and one other that I've heard about right in this immediate area and, and uh, probably will spend some more time trying to locate and photograph all of these. So. so the interesting thing to me is that that there is these types of writings or artifacts that have been found all over the place but they're just dismissed or they don't know about all the other things and so and they're not reported because they just it doesn't look Indian to them so they don't really know what it is so, so you know these stories these things have been found they're out there but they're just not being reported or anything said about it you know and you've been lucky enough to be in places where you talk to a lot of different people who's who shared some of these things with you and so on I appreciate you sharing that stuff with us but now do you know anything about the Egyptians in the Grand Canyon you've done any research or anything on them or know anything about them well I suspect is what you're talking about uh, I don't know that I would, from the research I've done and the people I've talked to, that I would call, call it Egyptian. I think it's uh, uh, something other than Egyptian, but I think is what you're talking about is, is the people that found the stairs that went up uh, to an open, opening in the side of the canyon. This is, mm -hmm. the, the stairs were like halfway up, so they're thousands of feet off the off the floor of the canyon and thousands of feet from the top but there was a set of stairs that they uh, they figured went down to where the water was at the time the cave was made so that would have been a long long time ago for the canyon to get that much more uh, more deep but uh, there were mummies inside and, and I guess that's why you're referring to it as Egyptian um, there's been several groups that have gone down and spent quite a bit of time down there and I have talked to some of the groups that have uh, also talked with the Indian tribes that live in the bottom of the Grand Canyon and, and so forth. I've also got some photographs of uh, uh, they had two stealth vehicles uh, that came up and observed them for a period of time. They photographed one of the two and and I was sent one of one of the uh, the still photographs of that that group was tied in with Fox News was with them and they were trying to find they figured that the caverns were big enough that there was probably other openings other than just in the side of uh, inside of Grand Canyon and that's what they were looking for was air shafts and and other openings into the caverns um, that was written up in in the local newspapers and that was a long time ago but uh, back I think even well it uh, got into Smithsonian I did a little bit of work I tracked down uh, one of the names in particular that was supposed to be tied in with the Smithsonian I was able to document that that was in fact an accurate name and that he had worked with the Smithsonian Institute um, but as far as getting other, any other details is all I, I got. I've, I've got copies of the newspaper article that talks about uh, going inside, finding the mummy and all the weapons. There was, there was military quarters near the outer perimeter. They found uh, what looked like uh, silos uh, for seed or food. Uh, further in, uh, at the time the newspaper articles quit, they hadn't searched all the tunnels yet that some of them had very foul stench to them and they were afraid to go down through some of the some of the tunneling at that time uh, some of the information I got was that there was quite a few car loads of artifacts taken out by the Smithsonian um, there was also statues inside inside these caverns that looked uh, kind of oriental and that's why I say I don't think it was that it was Egyptian but it could have been whoever it was uh, had definite knowledge of how to mummify people because there were rooms that that's all there was uh, was inside was quite a few mummies inside some of the rooms so uh, uh, further in it looked like there was housing for probably the rest of the family but towards the perimeter 
uh, out close to the opening into the Grand Canyon was uh, definitely for military. Uh, and that's uh, that's about all I can tell you on that. So uh, um, the, I, I have heard of other places in the United States where they have found uh, what they think was Egyptian. Here in Utah, we've we've got uh, information on on quite a few ancient groups in here, but uh, but those are the only Egyptian ones in Utah that I know of. The other ones are are. Uh, I don't know what country. Some of them we can identify. Other countries we can't identify the country. Just that there was ancient groups in here, and uh, and what they were doing. Some of them we know were in here mining. Other ones we don't know for sure. We just uh, finding what's what they left behind in graves and and armor, weapons, uh, those kinds of things. So uh, crystals, large crystals that were buried with some of their uh, swords and different things on burials and those kinds of things. So uh, that's that's about all I know on that, Terry. So so I know that you're from the Uinta Basin out the Vernal area. You, you know, tramped around the Uinta Mountains a lot. Befriended a lot of the Indians out there. But uh, um, you know, there's some stories circulating in small circles that there are some Egyptian things that the Egyptians or possibly in that area, a covered Egyptian pyramid. Um, and if you go to McConkie's ranch, you see them petroglyphs there. They, they look like either Egyptian or Aztec, something like that, not your regular Indians. Have you heard of anything unique about the Uinta Basin area? I, I've heard about uh, supposedly pyramids out there and those kinds of things. I've never seen any evidence of that myself out there. Uh, some of the petroglyphs uh, out there are obvious, uh, not your, not what you would consider your standard petroglyphs for the state of Utah. Um, they are world, world class. They fairly frequently go out uh, from uh, National Geographic and and uh, do articles on petroglyphs in the Uinta Basin area because of because of what they are, and they're they're far superior if you want to call it that uh, the the drawings and so forth and than uh, what you what you get from your normal Indians uh, through throughout the state of Utah at least and that and so uh, so as far as what group they are they always are fighting over that as to as to who made them and that but uh, uh, but definitely other Indian cultures and what they typically talk about when they're talking archaeology in the state of Utah uh, and we found we found quite a few you go down uh, McKee draw on Diamond Mountain and go down to the Green River uh, we've hiked into some areas where it looked like they were running an art school teaching them how to carve petroglyphs and uh, up on some cliffs and they were driving drawing some large human figures and and uh, as they went down the cliff they uh, they greatly improved each one of them like they were learning how to learning it in an art school or something and that and the things they were drawing there are also very controversial they some people call them head hunters they're all holding something that looks like holding maybe a human skull or a human head by the hair other people say they are carrying fire uh, from one camp to another and that that was a, they some kind of object that they carried that uh, they could carry coals or something uh, to start a fire with and that so but um, uh, you get some some pretty interesting animals through those areas carved. They've got uh, rhinoceroses. They've got uh, uh, they've got giraffes. Uh, I've I've photographed uh, a number of elephants, uh, not in that particular area, but here in Utah, up a little bit further north. Uh, I've gone in with an archaeology group, and and we photographed uh, the elephants up in in that area and that that they'd they'd carved and and. Uh, a lot of other things that uh, you can find in, in petroglyphs and ancient writing and that, although the start of this, uh, of this particular video we're making right now, we're talking much more ancient than most of this Indian writing is. But, uh, uh, but there's some of it's got to be pretty old to, to show elephants and that, although uh, down in uh, Fairfield and that, uh, they have 
excavated a mastodon up there. They've got uh, uh, pri the, of course they what you see in the museum isn't the real bones. They make castings of them, but but I've gone down and and seen them where they've put together this mastodon, and it's it is huge, uh, unbelievably big. But uh, uh, they've got it there in the, the museum in Fairfield. They've also got it in the museum in Price, and I think also. Uh, well, I know they've got it at the new museum up at the University of Utah. All of them have the, the uh, same skeleton cast from the bones. But um, so so there was a lot of interesting stuff here in, in Utah. Uh, and of course, uh, back in the Old West time and, and prior to railroad and, and white people coming into the state, there was lots of buffalo and those kinds of things, but uh, but that's not as unusual as some of the other things. Uh, I know where there's a number of turtles carved, that, that's always an interesting sign because I know people that claim that every anytime you see a turtle it's a treasure symbol. Um, I don't personally agree with that, but uh, but it could be, I suppose, but uh, but also it's interesting because uh, some of the things that you find carved are definitely from coastal areas. Uh, um, uh, turtles and that, even though St. George has turtles as, uh, uh, as protected species up there, it wasn't, it wasn't native to the area. It was brought in by people as pets and then they turned them loose and now somehow it's an endangered species in the area even though it wasn't native to the area. So. Um, but anyway, that, so uh, a lot of interesting things in, in both carvings and, and artifacts and antiquities that are found in the state. Uh, uh, I know a number of people that have found different treasures, uh, Spanish, uh, probably more Spanish treasures, but some of them are a lot older than that. Some of them are going back into the B.C. area. Uh, uh, time before Christ, we know that because of coinage and those kinds of things that uh, are being found at some of these sites, and some of them are, are several hundred to thousands of coins uh, that have been found in the Spanish Fork area and also Centerville area. Um, and so, uh, so those are those are some of the um, some of the things about ancient groups in the area. When we get into talking about the giants, we'll get into some really ancient things uh, that date back a long ways. With that, Kip, that's a wrap, and thank you. Okay.